Cabin for me means low hills in the east of the county, wild bog and mountain down there in the west where the Shannon rises. And especially lakes, dozens, hundreds of beautiful lakes. Above all, of course, Cabin for me means people. An easy going, droll people in ways. But a people with a marvellous zest for the human. The word character was the key word of my childhood. And that quality of excitement in the human is very strong in the cabin people yet. Cabin also for me means the frenzied combat of football and history thick on the ground and stories about writers. These things shaped me. My town, Bellyborough in East Cow. An Ulster plantation town. In my childhood, just ticking over. Today, the star of business, the pig industry, tourism, other small industries. The native Irish, Farrelly's, O'Reilly's and the rest, dominant since the late 19th century, or thereabouts. But the durable planter stock, a strong presence, always. Horace Robinson Parr, Bill Taylor, Charles Shackleton, James Charles Kirk, exotic names to us. Lord Lascar of Lascar Castle, and the big house entered our imaginations. Hamilton, Stuart's, Curry's, Young's ruled here over the centuries. A rule neither savage nor mild, somewhere between. Local folklore pointed to blood on these stones. Whisper too of Eve and Constance Gore Booth, visitors to this house around the turn of the century. Two girls in silk kimonos, both beautiful. One a gazelle. The castle lake, bewitching light and stillness. In 98, the rebels, mainly Presbyterian, on that hill there, made their stand and were decimated. And that was, um, what was the name of the, that was Bailey, of course, the family That there. was William Bailey, yes. Yeah. Succeeded by his, his uh, son, the bishop. Yeah. In this graveyard, yeah. the ancestors of Henry James, novelist, and William James, philosopher. Well, he wanted to play down the origin that is, that there were tenant farmers. He, he, in some of his writings, he spoke about property that he had in Ireland, you see, yes. as if they had been of the landlord stock. The Jameses came here from Wales about 1700. Tom Barron, local scholar, antiquarian, tells me, and he knows the story inside out. One Billy James left for the States in 1789 with 10 shillings in his pocket. Made a fortune, fathered Henry James I, a writer of some repute, who fathered the great novelist and the philosopher. It's really a new range. Really? It must be a new range if it one should, got into it. It should a, be excavated. It should think. be a, um, a, There were some of these um, passage graves. They were this lake could tell stories. It laps the very walls of the workhouse. We children mightn't have known much, but we knew what these walls were saying all right. We sniffed death, famine, tribal disaster, a coffin for every weed. The gaping windows told us to come on, warned us to keep back. In modern times, a footwear factory in the heart of the place. Prosperous once, with the 70s, in the case of this particular industry, the idleness of the three-day week. As if something 
in this fatal ground was insistent on a return to deprivation, emptiness. Well, the great lord commanded that several ladders should be applied to my sides on which a hundred of the Lilliputians mounted and walked towards my mouth laden with baskets full of meat from Gulliver's travels. 250 years ago on this wrath where at Quilca, three miles from Virginia, in East Cavan, Swift corrected the proofs of Gulliver's travels. Strange to think of that mad genius on this ground. My childhood was full of wild stories of Swift and this area, and in particular his extraordinary relationship with Dr. Tom Sheridan, who lived down the way there. It was a relationship one of the great literary friendships of the 18th century, full of practical jokes, poetry, versification, letters, and whatnots. On the practical jokes, Swift, on one occasion, in the uh, absence of Dr. Sheridan for a couple of days, constructed what's known as Stella's Bower over there, just a fallen tree remaining now. But Swift had uh, elaborate landscaping around it, constructed in a tremendous rush during the few days available. He swore everyone to secrecy, but word got to Sheridan. And on Sheridan's return, he was able to walk into the altered landscape with knowledge uh, beforehand, um, thus defeating the Dean's whole intent. And indeed, to complete Swift's route by this cavern man friend of his, a few weeks afterwards, Sheridan, in the absence of the Dean for a few days, constructed there on the lake, that artificial island. He employed everybody around the place to cart out stones, clay, osiers, sods, everything that was required, and constructed the island. All were sworn to secrecy. Swift, on this occasion, did not get word, and returning was led towards the lake by Sheridan and right into the arranged trap. A great victory for Cavan. Letters, no Dublin letters, not seen by our betters, wrote the Dean. Maybe here, a favourite working place of his, resting place too, no doubt. He left the little wealth he had to build a home for fools and mad, and showed by one satiric touch, no nation needed it so much.